Hello and welcome. Today we're going to be doing a review and demonstration of this. This is the Yamaha Silent Brass System for Trombone, model number SB5. For those who are not familiar with the whole Yamaha Silent Brass System, this system effectively is a practice mute with headphones. And so you get this bit, this is the mute bit which you sort of shove right up into the bell of your instrument and it's got a jack so you can plug a cable from this into this which is the main control center brains of the operation. You can actually plug two different mutes from two different players into this, you can have two headphones uh, connecting to it, you can have this battery operator so you can cart it with you and play with all your friends and so forth. It's got reverb and a number of different settings which we'll go into later. And then you've got your headphones which can be anything you like. And so the aim of this system is sort of twofold. Number one, you can practice without bothering anyone while still being able to hear what you're actually doing. And number two, if you're in a very noisy environment, you can practice and hear what you're playing uh, without having to stop because everyone around you is making a whole lot of different noise. So now I've got the Yamaha Silent Brass Mute inserted into my trombone. I'll just play a few notes so you can hear, uh, just using this microphone on my chest, um, how much quieter it makes the sound. <laughs> So with that level of volume, I could probably practice in the same room as my wife when she's watching TV and not annoy her any more than my presence generally does. Um, but of course, that's not the value of this Yamaha system. The value of this system is that you can pop some headphones on and listen to yourself and another person, if they also have this uh, same system, play. So firstly, I'll play just a few notes so you can hear what it sounds like without any reverb. We'll run through some of the reverb settings. They've all got a, a volume knob so you can turn the reverb up and down as I'll show you. Uh, but the first one is the rehearsal room reverb. <laughs> So with the three reverb options that you have, you can sort of change your sound and, and do a little bit of different work on it. But I struggle to actually think of a time when you would want to use that level of reverb when you're practicing. 
um, the whole idea of practice is to be able to improve and uh, master certain skills and pieces of music and if you've got so much reverb that you lose most of your articulation then you lose a lot of value in the practice that you're doing but of course your uses may be different to mine. One thing to note when playing uh, with this mute is that it has a lot of resistance and that doesn't surprise me because what you're trying to do is have uh, a large music making instrument uh, with a plug up the other end trying to get rid of all the noise that it produces. Um, and as a result of that, it's going to create quite a lot of back pressure. Interestingly enough, it creates so much back pressure that you can actually have your slide move uh, whilst playing loud notes. <laughs> Personally, I can only see really one situation in which I would myself use a unit like this, and that was if I was in an apartment building or a hotel or something like that. I absolutely needed to practice, but I couldn't make anything, uh, any real audible noise. And so a system like this might be useful for that. But that situation occurs so infrequently for me that using a standard practice mute such as the Schmute or the Dennis Wick practice mutes that I have, um, there's no disadvantage to using one of them. I certainly couldn't justify spending the $250 to $300 that the previous owner of this unit spent on it. But then again, other people are going to have different use cases. So I guess it's up to you. So I thank you for watching this video. I hope you've enjoyed it and have a lovely day.